now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swift as the strongest lead dog of the northwest. Blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold! Gold discovered in the Yukon! A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches! Back to the days of the gold rush! With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King! as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker Puffs wheat. It's neat. And when you hear the shooting, you're darn tootin' that Quaker makes the one Shot from guns, you're done tootin'. The king-size choice premium grains of both Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice are bigger and better tasting. They're puffed to perfection, packed with bang-up nut-like flavor because they're the ones shot from guns. For a summer breakfast treat that can't be beat, get Quaker Pop Rice and Quaker Pop Wheat. Young Constable Dick Warren was escorting Sally Lane home after the show at the music hall. What are you thinking about, Sally? Oh, cold. We'll have more snow before morning. But there's something else on your mind. It's only Harry. Your brother? Yes. I caught a glimpse of him as we passed the Mavic Congress. He's playing Farrell again to lose every cent he has. That wouldn't be such a bad thing. What? If he doesn't have any money, he'll go back to work. You'll have to admit that Harry's a different man when he's working and when he isn't. He's young and headstrong, but there's nothing really bad about him. I didn't say that. He's no younger than I am, though. Twenty-five is young. It's time he settled down. I wish he would. But you don't know how I worry sometimes. Yes, I do. I can see it in your face, and it isn't right. He has a temper, and he's so strong. I'm afraid he'll get into a fight someday and there'll be real trouble. Oh, here we are. Will you come in and have some coffee? I go on duty at midnight. I have to get back to headquarters. Well, thank you. Sally, look at me. I am. Will you marry me? We've only known each other for three months, Steve. That's long enough. You're just starting on the fourth. Well, I'll admit we won't have much money, but we'll make out fine. If only it weren't for Harry. Can't you forget him for a minute? No, I can't. That's just it. I can't think of myself at all as long as I'm worried about him. And it wouldn't be fair to you to ask you to share my worries. I want to, Sally. You had no sympathy for Harry. You're impatient with him, and you feel he ought to know better. There's no doubt about that. Well, there's your answer. No one can help him who feels like that, and he needs it. Oh, I'm elected, I guess. Tell me this. If Harry were working and settled down, would you marry me then? Yes. What's your answer? Uh, I'll give you my answer tomorrow. That's a promise. The first thing tomorrow morning. It's a promise. The first thing tomorrow morning. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. An hour later, Harry Lane was saying goodbye to his friends at the Monte Carlo. Well, boys, I've got my last dollar, sir. Tomorrow, head to the creeks and go to work. So long, boys. Hi, Harry. Good luck to you, boy. Thanks. I'll see you in the spring. Good morning, Harry. Good morning, Sally. Good morning, Sally. Morning, Sally. Beyond the cafe's front street was dark, but there was a full moon. And as Harry passed the Wainwright store, he noticed that the door was open, but there was no light in the place. Uh, that's funny. Wainwright's usually pretty careful about locking up. He 
climbed the steps to the porch with a hand on the doorknob. An impulse made him call out. Hey, anybody in here? He heard a noise and stepped inside the store. Could be a dog getting in the supply. Or a match. At that moment, he heard someone behind him. Hey, he whirled and struck out with his fist. It connected solidly with someone's chin. But almost at once, something hit him on the back of the head. Oh. And he went oh. down. His next conscious thought was that his head must have been split wide open. Oh. He lifted himself to a sitting position. He felt the bump behind his ear. And then he remembered the open door, the blow. He struggled to his feet. First through his pockets until he found the match and lighted it. There, just in front of him, Jim Wainwright was lying on the floor, his head only inches away from the open door of an iron safe. I hit him. He hit me as he was going down. His head must have hit the safe door. Let's see if you... Harry knelt beside the unconscious store owner. The match burned his finger. Oh. He lit another. Hey, he hit his head all right. What was he doing here in the dark? Why didn't he answer when I called? I'd look... Looks as if he's dead. I've killed him. i got to get out of here. It was King who discovered Jim Wainwright. He was walking down Front Street with a sergeant and Constable Warren only a few minutes after Harry Lane left the store. King ran up to the door of the store and barked. Whoa! Whoa! What's he barking at? We'll find out. The store is dark. There doesn't seem to be anyone inside. The door is unlocked. The light is hanging on that wall. Better light it. Right. Something on the floor, King? Yes, a man. The safe's open. How about that ladder, Dick? Coming. Jim Wainwright. Nasty crack on the head. Robbery. Let's have the ladder in a little closer. Is he dead? No, not yet at any rate. Heart's still beating. Get Dr. Moran. Yeah. I'll... What's the matter? Nothing. I, I'm on my way. Dick Warren had noticed a red mitten with a blue border lying on the floor near the counter. Without saying anything to the sergeant, he picked it up and hurried from the store. He roused Dr. Moran, and the doctor promised to get to the store within five minutes. But Dick didn't return there. He headed straight for the Lane Cabin on 4th Street. And when he reached it, flipped his gun from its holster. Through the window, he could see Harry packing supplies into a knapsack. Sally was watching him. Dick entered the cabin without knocking. All right, Harry, you won't need those supplies. You're going to headquarters with me. Well, what for? To answer some questions. What's he done, Dick? I haven't done anything. This is your mitten, isn't it? Why, yes, I knit them. I remember you showing me the pair when you finished them. Harry dropped this one in Wainwright's store. I haven't done anything. Do you deny that you were in the store tonight? Well, no, Do you but... deny hitting Wainwright? I may have hit him, but let me explain. Go ahead. How much money did you get well, from the safe? I didn't touch the safe. I was passing along the street. saw the store door was open. I was going to close it when I, I heard a noise inside. I went in. It was real dark. I, I heard someone behind me. I turned and let fly with a punch. And something hit me on the head, and I, I blacked out. When I came to it, it, it was Wainwright, lying on the floor. Oh, Harry, you killed him. One punch was all I landed. He must have hit his head on the safe when he went down. Take it easy, Sally. Wainwright isn't dead. Not yet. But he may die. Oh, he didn't look any too good to me. Well, now try Harry for mercy. Harry should have thought of that. Harry, it was an accident. The safe was open. I'm not sure you took anything, but that doesn't make any difference. Your story about the door of the store being open, the store being dark, someone attacking you from behind. Who can believe that? It's the truth. I believe him. You're his sister. Dick, does anyone but you know about the mitten? No. Then don't tell anyone. Let Harry go. What are you asking? You must. You say you love me. Well, now's the time to prove it. Wouldn't prove anything except that I'd be deserting my duty. Of course I love you. But your brother is guilty of assault. Perhaps even manslaughter or murder. I have to arrest him. You say that no one could believe his story. Well, I do. And if he's tried and convicted, if he goes to the gallows because of you, do you think I could marry you then? Never, did. No matter how much I love you, it would always stand between us. Sally. Let him go. He can be across the border by tomorrow night. And then if they start looking for him, all right. All I'm asking is that you forget about the mitten and give Harry a chance to get away. Sally, what do you love me? 
I wish I'd shown the mitten to the sergeant and kept my mouth shut. You can still do that, and it's all I ask. Oh, no, no, even that would be wrong. Sally, I, I tried to explain to you how much the force means to me. And you've always seemed to understand. Dick I turned away from Harry as he right. talked to Sally. And Harry's hand slipped old... inside his knapsack. When it came out, there was a pistol in his hand. He stepped forward quickly, gazed to the spot where he himself had been hit that night, and brought the barrel of his gun down on his head. Oh, Dick! Oh, Harry, how could you? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, I tell you. At the moment when Dick Warren dropped to the ground, Jim Wainwright was being moved to the hospital. But it was an hour later before he regained consciousness, and the sergeant was able to question him. I don't want to tell you, Jim. But can you tell us what happened? I'm not a great deal, Sergeant. I've been at the mansion house. I was on my way home. I saw a light in the back of the store. Then it went out. I wondered if my eyes were playing tricks on me. I decided to invest. The front door was locked all right. We found a window force open in the rear of the store. Go on. Well, I went in. I was hit. That's all you remember? No. No, I must have come to for a few seconds. I don't know how much later... But I saw a man leaving the store. Recognize him? Yes. The light was full on his face. It was Harry Lane. You're sure? Positive. Just one more question. We found your safe open. How much gold was in there? About $5,000 worth. There's none now. It was in pokes belonging to different miners. I was keeping it for them. The names were on the bag. I'll try to get it back. Harry Lane... I'd never have believed that he could turn thief. We'll see. Rest easy, Jim. Yeah. It's a good idea. It was only ten minutes later that the sergeant found Dick Warren bound and gagged on the floor of the lame cabin. When the young constable had freed of his bond. Oh, thanks. I wondered why you disappeared. How'd you happen to come here? I found a mitten in the store. I thought it belonged to Harry. It may have. It did. He admitted it. He gave you the same treatment he gave Wainwright. Yes. That isn't the whole truth. How do you happen to be here? Wainwright's recovered consciousness. But he saw Harry leave the store. Wainwright's alive. And there won't be any murder charge. No, but there's 5,000 in gold missing. Harry lied, then. He did steal. Go on. What were you saying about the whole truth? I was careless. And that isn't the whole truth, either. Well? Sally asked me to give Harry a chance. A chance to make his getaway. I might just as well have agreed. I listened to her arguments. They were personal, and I turned away from Harry to talk to her. He let me have it. She's evidently left with him. I suppose they're heading for the border. I suppose. Something over an hour to start. Yes. They will follow their trail wherever they go. We'll get back to headquarters and harness the team. We, Sergeant? Yes, you and I. Do I have to go, sir? Don't you want to? Don't you want to help bring Harry back to make up for letting him get away? No, I don't. And your reason? Sally. She's the girl I want to marry. Harry's her brother. I know that. Don't you think it's a good reason for not wanting to make the arrest myself? It's no reason at all for a police officer. I sympathize with you, Dick, believe me. But sooner or later, every member of the force must face this problem. Does duty come first? Are our personal motives more important? Are we able to live up to the oath we've taken? Do we have a right to wear the uniform? If I have to arrest Harry, then the answer is no as far as you're concerned. What's your decision? I'm ready. Let's go. Just before dawn, Harry and Sally stopped at Louis Michel's roadhouse about 20 miles from the border. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you need some hot food. Forget about me. And our team's worn out. Louie will lend me some fresh dogs. Come on. Right. Then we won't stop for long. No. The door's barred. Well, not. There's a light inside. There's smoke coming from the chimney, and there are dogs around and back. There must be someone here. Louie usually keeps open house. I was just wondering about the door being barred. Against the wind, perhaps. Well... Who are you? What do you want? Where's Louie? He isn't around. He must be. I can see his parka hanging on the wall. His dog's out in the run. What do you mean he isn't around? I said he wasn't here. Let him come in. What? It's all right. Let him come in. 
Okay, come on in. That's better. Who are you two? What difference the names make? Where's Louis? You better take our word for it. He isn't here. Help with your hands, you're covered. Oh, hell It's all right, sis. Now, listen, you two. We want some food and some fresh dogs, and we're going to take them. If Louie were here, he'd be glad to oblige us. But since he isn't, we'll help ourselves. See what you can find out in the kitchen, Sally. There should be some coffee on the stove. That's what we need most. Keep away from that kitchen door. Go ahead, Sally. <laughs> Sally, she's fainted. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. <laughs> Sergeant Preston would agree. A man's best friend in the Yukon is his dog and his gun. Yeah? In any pioneer country, guns of all kinds are a vital need, both for protection and for food. A collection of old guns can teach a person a great deal about the history of this country. And say, fellows and girls, you are lucky, because right now you can get a scale model Western gun collection. Six authentic miniatures of famous old-time Western guns Plus a special gun rack for only one dollar and a box top from delicious Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice. Or you can order any one of these guns individually for only 20 cents each and a box top. But this radio offer ends real soon, so you must hurry. Remember, these scale model guns are solid metal, not hollowed out metal, not plastic. And the detail is amazing in such tiny miniatures. So make a note of the gun or guns you want by number or name. Number one, Colt 45 Six Shooter, the famous cowboy gun. Number two, old reliable buffalo gun. Number three, flintlock dueling pistol, often worn in a sash by gamblers. Number four, Remington's breech loader revolver. Number five, Wells Fargo Pony Express pistol. Number six, Winchester 1873 Buffalo Bill rifle. Don't wait. Write down the number or the name. You can get one or more of these authentic scale model Western guns for only 20 cents each and a box top from Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice. For full details and a handy order blank, see the special new packages now at store. Hurry, supply limited. Remember, right now, tonight, you can send for all six guns. The complete scale model Western gun collection, plus a special gun rack, all for only one dollar and just one box top from delicious Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice. Send with your name and address to Western Guns, Box L... Chicago 77, Illinois. This offer ends soon, so act now. Send to Western Guns, Box L, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. Harry ran to his sister's side. And as he did, so the two men closed in behind him. Sally. One of them stuck a gun in his back just as he reached Sally. Now you're covered, mister. Get his gun, Barney. Got it. Sally. Look, Harry. In the corner. What? It's Louie. He's been murdered. Get some ropes, Barney. We'll tie him up and leave him. Right. At the moment Sally opened the door of the kitchen, the sergeant and Dick drove to the top of a rise less than half a mile from the roadhouse. Okay. Oh, yes. oh, no. oh, oh. You recognize those dogs out in front of the cabin, Dick? That's Harry's team. He's caught them. And you'll be going on alone from here. Right. There's a line of woods over the left there that runs behind the cabin. Follow it and they won't be able to see you. I'm heading straight down the trail, Sergeant. Harry won't shoot at you. You're sure? I'm certain. You won't make any more trouble. Perhaps Sally will forgive me sometime. You've passed your test, Dick. You know, uh, it may not have been as severe as we thought. What do you mean by that? The story Harry told you about the door being open and all the rest of it could be true. I keep thinking of one point. Harry landed a solid blow on someone's chin, and he says it was after that that he was hit on the head. Harry was hit all right. I saw the lump. Well, Harry packs a lot of power in his fist. If Wainwright took a solid right to the chin, he couldn't possibly have knocked Harry out as he was falling to the floor. That's right. And there's another thing. There was a deep gash on Wainwright's head, but no sign of a bruise on his chin. Then... Then you don't believe that Harry hit Wainwright at all. Could be he was up against two other men. But those two men knocked out both Wainwright and Harry and stole the gold. Hey. Take a look at Harry's sled before you go inside. There's no gold. We have nothing against him. Well, let's say no evidence except Wainwright's identification, and that only proves he was in the store. I'm on my way. 
Will you wait here? King and I will be around in case you need us. I'll see you later. Easy, boy. You're wondering why we are going along? There's something about that roadhouse you don't like, eh? Well, we'll leave the team in the woods and head down there, keeping to the cover of the trees. Just in case, King. Just in case. When Dick reached the roadhouse, he made a thorough search of Harry's sled. There was no gold on it. He opened the door of the cabin with a light heart. He found Sally and Harry sitting at a table in the large front room drinking coffee. Good morning, Dick. You don't seem surprised to see me. We saw you coming down the trail. You should never have run away. I know. Uh, we're ready to start back for Dawson this minute. I'm, I'm ready to face the music. There may not be much music. Jim Wainwright isn't going to die. What? And I see you haven't any gold on your sled. I told you I never touched the safe. I hope we'll be able to clear you of all charges. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, shall we get started? Well, there's no rush. I'd like to warm up a little and have Louie bring me some coffee. Well, I'll get it for you. You stay right here and talk things over with Harry. Sergeant Preston and King kept to the cover of the trees until they were directly behind the roadhouse. As they started for the back door, the scent of death reached King. He looked up into his master's face. Still worried, boy? Well, I don't believe Dick will have any trouble with Harry. Well, we'll make sure. There was a sled pulled up just outside the back door of the roadhouse. It was caked with snow, and a harness was thrown carelessly across it. That sled's been on the trail recently. Maybe someone else in there. We'd better take a look, Ken. The sergeant untied the lashings that held the canvas cover on top of the grub box. On top of the supplies, there were at least 20 small leather sacks. King used to be the missing gold folks. Names on them. Jake Winters, Bill Jones, Tex Martin. All from Dawson and all Wainwright's customers. No doubt about it. This is the gold that was stolen, and it means the men who stole it are inside. The sergeant stepped to one of the kitchen windows. It was coated with frost. He took out his knife, intending to scrape away a little of the frost, and then thought better of it. The noise might attract attention. He breathed on the pane until there was a small circle of clear glass. Inside, he saw Sally at the stove. Two men with drawn guns near the door that led out of the kitchen. A dead man on the floor. The sergeant nudged his guns in the face. Quiet, King. In the large front room of the cabin, Dick rose from his chair. Hey, Dick, where are you going? Out in the kitchen. I want to talk with Sally. Dick, don't go out there. Sit down. What's the matter with you? Take your hands off me. I'm telling you, don't go out there. Why not? Why shouldn't I? As soon as I say, Dick, sit down. Now, wait a minute. If there's something wrong around here, I'm going to find out about it. Yeah, I found out. Hey, don't go for your gun. Don't you, please. Get his gun, Barney. Yeah. Who are these men? They're killers. They just murdered Louis. They had you covered, all of us covered, ever since you came in. There was no way we could warn you. They were going to shoot you as you came down the trail. But we told them you were after us. That we'd give ourselves up and start back for Dawson right away. We should never have listened to them. They'd have double-crossed us for sure. I don't like to shoot Mounties. Now you have to. Three shots and we're safe. Well, you get the policeman, I'll get the boy and the girl. Which policeman? Hey, what the... Oh. Harry, out in the kitchen, there's Sergeant Preston. Don't turn around, either of you, until you drop those guns. I'll show you. Can he take... Oh, 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 oh. King reached for John as he whirled and tried to fire at the sergeant. Barney also turned and fired. The sergeant's gun spoke at the same time. The gun was knocked to the ground by King's rush, and his shot went wild. So did Barney. But the sergeant's bullet caught Barney in the shoulder. Get his gun, Dick. I'll take you as Barney. See if you can find some clean cloth to bandage his arm, Harry. There's some out in the kitchen. All right, King. Let's shut up now. On your feet, you. That's Where did you come from, Sergeant? King and I came through the woods and in the back way. You said you'd be around if I needed you, Sergeant. You were just in time. They were going to kill us. They did kill Louis. I know. I saw him out in the kitchen. Why, Judd? What do you think? He recognized you? Recognized him? This is Judd Trent. The other one is Barney Gordon. They're both wanted for another murder in Whitehorse. What's more, I found the gold that was stolen from Jim Wainwright's safe on that sled. Then there's no charge against me at all? None, Harry. As a matter of fact, we're in your debt. You led us straight to the real criminals. But I don't have to point out that you almost lost your life in doing it. Remember, it's the Northwest Mounted's job to protect the innocent. In the future, put your trust in the law. I sure will, Sergeant. Will you, Sally? Dick knows the answer to that question. You've forgiven him for doing his duty. If I'm going to marry a policeman, I want him to be a good one. Sally, 
just as soon as we get back to Dawson. Correction, Constable. You mean just as soon as Dodd and Barney are behind bars. Just as soon as we're able to say this case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. It's the winner by a mile. Yes, the cereal that's sure to win your whole family's favor these summer mornings is refreshing, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're in first place with Mom because they're quick, ready to serve, save time in the morning. They're the winner every time with the youngsters because they're the ones shot from guns actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them extra crisp and tender. And Dad picks Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat because you can sweeten them to suit your own special taste. You enjoy the full, natural, nut-like flavor of the choice premium grains. Then think of the nourishment your family can cash in on. Yes, in every bowlful, there are extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Top with milk or thick, rich cream. Add fruit. And there's a deluxe family breakfast that's really economical. Remember, the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice come only in the big red and blue package with the sealed inner lining. So they're crisp as can be. Buy both delicious kinds and you have a winner for the whole family's enjoyment for refreshing summer breakfast. To learn his next assignment, Sergeant Preston reported to the inspector in the Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters at Dawson. You sent for me, Inspector? Yes, Sergeant. I have a difficult assignment for you. What do you know about the town of Suntech? Why, uh, I know that some of the roughest characters in the Yukon make it their headquarters. Exactly. And on the ridge above Sunset, there's the McDonald Mine. It's getting to be one of the largest producers in the territory. That combination, so much gold and such men may lead to serious trouble. You ought to go to Sunset and make that your headquarters, Sergeant. I leave the method of handling any trouble that may arise entirely to you. Yes, sir. I'll search for Sunset at once. But the McDonald mine has already been marked as a target by the ruthless men who inhabit the wide-open town. And Blackjack Golf, their leader, has a personal grudge to settle with the sergeant. Heading for Sunset could easily mean heading for sudden death. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Thursday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. A breakfast cereal shot from guns. Only Quaker Paco Ten has wheat and rice shot from guns. That's Quaker Paco Ten, a regular cereal pantry. Six different delicious ready to serve cereals. Ten crisp, fresh, individual servings. At breakfast, you can take your pick of the pack. Have your own separate individual package. Enjoy a different cereal, extra fresh every morning. And just remember, only Quaker Taco 10 has all your family cereal favorites. Try Quaker Taco 10. You'll be glad you did. J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.